This is breaking news. We enter our programming with breaking news on the subway train collision and derailment yesterday on the Upper West Side. The NTSB is holding a news conference on the investigation right now. Let's listen in. In charge, our lead investigation, our lead investigator of this investigation. The National Transportation Safety Board is an independent federal agency that's charged by Congress with investigating every civil aviation accident in the United States and significant events in other modes of transportation, including public transit. We're here to investigate the collision of two New York City transit trains, which uh, collided uh, one, with one train striking another train at a crossover just north of the 96th Street Station. The striking train at the time was a non-revenue train, meaning there were no passengers on board. The struck train had about 200 people on board and we are aware that there are injuries to some individuals. We have seen different numbers on those injuries. Uh, so I would say as far as confirming numbers, please reach out uh, to local authorities. Uh, but let me do sta sta state that um, on behalf of the National Transportation Safety Board, uh, I want to extend our deepest sympathies to those that were injured in this collision. Our thoughts are always uh, with those uh, who are victims of a uh, terrible tragedy or accident, and we hope for a speedy recovery for each of you. So this is our first full day on scene. Uh, the team, most of the team, arrived around 7.45 a.m. this morning. We have a few others that uh, came in uh, from California, from the state of Washington, and then from Ohio. We have a, a number of specialists in different areas of the investigation, which I will get into in just a second. Our first order of business was meeting at MTA headquarters. We wanted to take some time to get together with MTA, uh, New York uh, City Transit, uh, the local union officials, and the uh, state oversight uh, uh, agency. And what we did in that meeting was just uh, give a preview on what we're gonna be doing that day. Uh, give them information about what we might be looking for or what we might need and how we intend to proceed throughout the day. Then we went straight to the scene. That's usually our for first order of business. Uh, we wanted to see the two damaged trains in particular. Now I want to describe these two trains. Both trains are made up of 10 cars but they are a set of five cars, a coupler, and a second set of five cars. And so what most of you do know is that at some point on the striking train, that's the non-revenue train, at some point uh, there, there were passengers on board uh, and an unruly passenger began activating the emergency brakes in numerous cars. That in turn triggered an alert to the train operator and the train uh, began to go into, an, into emergency, which means it stops the train. In order to move the train, the train crew has to reset the brakes. Uh, so they began on direction from the control center uh, to reset the brakes, except brakes in, in the third car back uh, did not reset. And uh, they tried to reset them, so they talked with the control center, and then the control center instructed the crew to cut out the brakes on the first five cars and cut out the power and then discharge the passengers at the 79th Street Station and move the, tra the train set 
to the 240th Street rail yard. At this point, there are three people on the train, three crew members. You have, as I said, the, five, the second set of cars, that's the five back cars that are operational. They can move and they have brakes. The front five cars, or the leading five cars, have no brakes, have no power. It's essentially rolling stock. And so they begin pushing the, from the sixth car, the five cars ahead of them, they push the whole train because they're going towards uh, the rail yard. We've got two crew members in the lead, uh, car and we've got one crew member who's pushing uh, in the sixth car. The two in front are serving as flaggers. They are the eyes and ears for the operator in the sixth car. They, we know that they, they passed through some signals, approach signals and a home signal, and in that configuration, in that push mode, uh, they, uh, that train struck a northbound train at a crossover. The non-revenue train then uh, was pushed to the right, hit a wall, and the first car is pushed upwards. The train that was struck with the passengers was pushed to the left, and then both cars derailed. There is a lot of damage uh, to the trains. Uh, there are uh, uh, there's a lot of damage along the track. And so now we have to figure out why this happened, how this happened. Uh, so over the next few days, we're documenting the scene. Uh, we are here to gather the perishable evidence. And what that means is the evidence, everything that goes away once New York City Transit puts everything back into operation. So we want to get the perishable evidence and begin to collect the factual information for our investigation. Once we can go through the factual portion of our investigation, we will then get to analysis and issue a final report. But right now, we're, we're not here to come up with a probable cause. We are here to get the perishable evidence. Again, our mission overall is to always understand how something happened why something happened, an event happened, to prevent it from happening again. So let me talk about our specialists. We have uh, a team of 13 here. We have specialists in operations and human performance. What they will be looking at is the performance of the train crew and others, including the control center. Uh, they'll look at training, they'll look at qualifications, and they'll look at system safety or safety management systems. We have specialists in signals. They will be looking at uh, the signal systems, the wayside detectors, the wayside signal uh, systems, and they will get all the signal downloads. We have uh, Personnel focused on mechanical. What they are looking at is the trains themselves. They're looking at the train consist, and they're looking at the brakes, uh, and every, anything mechanical with both trains. Then we have uh, investigators focused on crashworthiness. What they're looking at is they're examining the injuries to the occupants as it relates to the dynamics of the crash. And finally, we'll have a. Uh, uh, one investigator look at track, uh, but we've, we've essentially ruled out any track issues at this time. So uh, before I take questions, there is one issue I do want to raise, uh, and that's New York City uh, transit trains don't have three things that are key to safety and key to investigations. Inward facing cameras, outward facing cameras, and event data uh, 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 I'm sorry, recorders, event data recorders. What event data recorders provides is the speed of the trains, the braking commands or braking inputs, the throttle position, uh, operator commands. Now why this is important? Sure it's important for our investigations. It will help us 
most accurately determine what occurred as a result of an event. However, what it's really beneficial for is the operator to figure out how to make safety change early on in an investigation. And they can do that right away. Now, granted, they're going to get access to our information. We have a great relationship with MTA, with New York City Transit, and with others, and we're appreciative of that. They've been very helpful uh, at giving us a, a information that we need and being very open. It's, it's a, a collaborative relationship, but we need uh, event data recorders and inward and outward facing cameras. We made this recommendation in 2015 to the Federal Transit Administration to require transit systems to have them, to install them on new and refurbished trains. That recommendation is currently in the open unacceptable status because nothing was done. So with that, I want to uh, take some questions. What we're gonna do is I'll call on you You'll uh, give me your name and affiliation. I'd like you to stick to one question, but we can do uh, multiple rounds and I can come back to you. You were first. Andrew Sipp from NBC4 here in New York. You mentioned that the crew said they were instructed by rail control to move the car to the 240th Street yard. Did that instruction include ignoring a red signal or were they told don't worry about the red signals, you're clear to go? Uh, the question is on the instructions that were provided for uh, by the control center to the crew with respect to the signals. Uh, they, there were two approach signals and one home signal. Uh, we don't have that information yet, but that is part of our investigation. Uh, and, and we will get that to understand what occurred, what instructions were provided. Yes. The question is whether this appears to be human error. It is too early to determine uh, probable cause, whether it's uh, human error, whether it's mechanical, whether uh, it has something to do with the signal system. Here's what I'll say about human error, though, and this is our experience at the NTSB. It's easy to blame humans. Human error is a symptom of a system that needs to be redesigned. Human error is always a symptom of a system that needs to be redesigned. So we, that's why we look broadly at all the factors, because it's not just the operators that are part of this. Uh, and, and so we'll look at that as part of the investigation, but I, I would urge people uh, to be cautious about just uh, blaming, especially bl you know, blaming the train crew. We don't know. Uh, we'll look at what uh, actions were taken. Yes, and then I'll go here on the floor. Yes. Yeah, the question was about the unruly passenger, and did I, do I know more information on that? I don't have any more information at this time. Uh, I had asked questions earlier about uh, the passenger, uh, but I don't have answers for that at this time. But what, what I do know is that they were pulling the emergency brakes in multiple cars, not just one car, uh, and that uh, uh, set the stage for everything that happened afterwards, including the fact that uh, um, the, uh, the brakes had to be cut out from that first uh, section of the train and the five cars. Yes. Ian Park from New York One, you mentioned human error is essentially about systems that need improvement or changing. So do the emergency brakes that uh, this person, a really passenger, was pulling and caused this entire uh, accident to happen, well, potentially or contributed to the accident, do those systems need to be improved? Does it need to be harder for people to be able to have access to those things going yeah, the question is on the emergency brakes and access by uh, passengers in each of the cars. I mean, these are for safety, for the safety of passengers so that uh, they can uh, pull on an, uh, an emergency hand.
at that, but uh, and that'll be part of our investigation. But we don't have any conclu conclusions on that at this time. Yes. Um, uh, Nolan, uh, Nolan Hicks with the Post. Uh, the New York Post. The um, train as it's exiting 96th Street has a red signal according to the president of New York City Transit this morning. The train continues. The way the signaling system works is if there's a red signal and if a train goes past it, it's supposed to trigger the emergency brakes automatically. Mm -hmm. Do you have any idea why the brakes on the train weren't triggered as it passed the red signal? Well, first of all, uh, the question is on the signal systems and uh, some previous statements uh, that uh, may have been made about the signal system. First of all, let me just say, we have to independently confirm all this. So I, I cannot say what the signal was showing. What I will say is if you have a train set of 10 cars and the first five cars don't have brakes, it's not going to trigger anything. So if I can just clarify, if the brakes are cut out on the first five cars, if it were to run past the signal, there's no braking system for the signal to trip before you're saying? There's, the braking system is operational on the sixth car through the 10th car. That's but correct. The lead car is getting the signal, I guess. So, so, so where does the signal kick in? So where does the signal uh, kick in? I mean, it's a matter of seconds, seconds when they pass the signal. There were three signals, two are approach signals. Those two approach signals uh, essentially tell the train to slow down. Uh, that is something we have to look at. You know, part of this is also we have to factor in the speed of the train at the time. So just knowing, uh, you know, we're, we're not able to say right now on the first day of the investigation, uh, that this is how far it went uh, through a signal or before a signal because we really have to look at the speed of the train and the conditions at the time. But it, that is something that we'll be able to look at in the investigation. And I do hope to have more inf substantive information uh, tomorrow to share. Yes. And then we'll go over here, sir. Yeah. So the question is how fast the trains were going. We do have to uh, look at that. Uh, but also uh, the question is about the event data recorders. Event data recorders uh, really capture a lot of information. It's not just the speed of the train. It's braking applications. It's uh, commands by the train operator. It, uh, everything from... Uh, uh, and yeah. throttle positions on the train. Uh, so all actions that were taken by the operator, for the most part, when, it, when that operator interfaces with the train, would be recorded by a data recorder. That information then is used in our investigation. This has been breaking news. 